ahead and call Morris County Physical Court to order September 17th, 2018. Under guests, uh, we've got the Kentucky Transportation Commissioner uh, and uh, we got the Secretary uh, Thomas and uh, District 1 representative Kyle Polk and uh, Representative Mark Welch. Good morning, gentlemen. Y'all want to say anything this morning or? Right there, yes, yes. Good to see y'all. Well, first, thanks for the opportunity to speak to you and for uh, carving out some time for us. Uh, we're, we're here today just to listen, and uh, we, we, we took the mindset that <clears throat> local folks know best about what's going on with their roads and, and what's happening. Uh, of course, the governor, uh, he's all about jobs. I think everybody knows that. We're getting close to 50,000 since he took office. I think 46,000 and some. So jobs, 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 but he also understands infrastructure and he understands that it takes infrastructure to connect people to jobs. And so one of the things, <coughs> excuse me, one of the things we've been focused on since, uh, since he took office was the, the 27,000 miles uh, of state highway system. But we also recognize that there's a total of 80,000, there's 53,000 more miles out there in the county system. Uh, and I think we're all uh, aware of the need for more revenue. I think all of us are in that situation. And so I thought it'd be prudent, uh, constructive to come out, talk to folks, hear uh, what's going on on the county system, and perhaps if we can partner with you until such time as the revenue comes. Uh, we're looking for any uh, roads in a critical repair state that needs, needs repair, or we're looking for any roads that lead to or sustain jobs, job growth. So, uh, but uh, we, we just felt like it's better to come out and talk to folks. Uh, I mean, you guys know best about your county road system and also uh, any comments that you might have about your system and, and your state of funding. This, this helps me when I'm talking to the legislators about the need for increased revenue. So, uh, and uh, Senator Carroll, yeah, thank you for being here as well. I appreciate, appreciate your support. Uh, so it's working together for all of us to, to try and, and, and meet the needs of, of our infrastructure and transportation system. So. So with that, that's that's what that's what I had to say. Um, but we've got Kyle here. If you've got any interest in lo anything local, uh, Gray, of course, from the rural secondary side. We've got several buckets of money. It's all all limited, constrained. But the idea is to work together if we can to see see what your needs are. So that that's what we're here for today. So thank you. Well, I, I appreciate y'all being here, and I know uh, Kyle just took over, and he's been working with us. Uh, uh, over the past three years that I've been here. And uh, I know we just met, Mark and Kyle and I met uh, last Friday out in Aurora, but uh, we want to give some uh, accolades to Kyle for the hard work that he's done over the past three years that I've observed. So yeah, he's, I've, just, I've, he's just been promoted, so uh, we, we threw him into the, <laughs> into the lines then. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, no, we appreciate the uh, District 1 for I know whenever I've called, I've got an immediate response either from Kyle or Mark, and I know Wendy uh, works with them directly uh, as well. But uh, um, we do have some initiatives that we've discussed earlier yeah, yeah. Uh, that we're uh, we're hoping to announce pretty soon. So uh, we'll keep everybody posted on that, and the transportation cabinet's involved with that as sure. well. So and we have that on our list too. So thank you for that. Yes, thank you. Oh. Y'all, do y'all have anything? We've had some good responses. Uh, I mean, from the they call it the media calls it a tour or whatever. But uh, there, there are you know typically we find two or three areas that counties need help on that maybe we can help. So it's so far it's been a some very positive from our perspective anyway. So I agree. Yeah. All right. What do you, what what's your sense of relative funding? Uh, at a county level versus you know what's available through the rural secondary is that are you are you keeping up are you able to keep up in, in a, on a sustained level with your maintenance or 
Yeah, I, I tell you what we, we've had is uh, over the past three years, I, I do believe that we have uh, here in Marshall County, but we've had obviously uh, unforeseen circumstances, weather related. I think okay. in 2016, we had a, a massive flood, uh, he heavy rains that kind of hit our infrastructure. And so we had to shift some dollars locally that we typically budget for uh, to, to combat that. But once all that was done, we put those monies back in uh, so we, I think Marshall County really hasn't been affected uh, as per se some of the other counties, but we've managed. Managed pretty well, okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I know we discussed it earlier. We've uh, increased our focus on our bridges within the county. Uh, we're on our second bridge uh, that we'll be putting in uh, and replacing. So we've done some... Uh, replacing of our infrastructure regarding our bridges. Yeah, we have, of course, we have a thousand in the six year plan, uh, a little over 400 in the, in the biennium. So we're definitely, our fo this administration's focus is on, on the nuts and the bolts, the meat and potatoes. That's right. So, well, I don't want to take up any more time than I need to, but I understand you and Gray are, are going around looking at some projects. Yes. And so, okay, and Kyle. And so, so yep. we're just here to, to listen and to, to see where we could possibly help. So appreciate thank that. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Old business approved the minutes September 6. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We had tabled the uh, the nonprofit workshop from last meeting. Um, Wendy, do you want to share where uh, those funds would come from? I mean, Emily. I'm sorry, <laughs> Emily. <laughs> Don't want me explaining it. <laughs> <laughs> um, further down on the agenda, the budget amendment is is on there, and in that amendment, there were some funds that had no allocation. Um, other than reserves, so those are um, there are twenty thousand dollars in proposed in that budget amendment to go to the special group contributions grant line item to um, to be able to cover those the funds that could be used for those training classes. You, you said reserves out of reserves. It's it's not out of reserves. It is. Of the monies that I'm amending in in the general fund, it is it w it is part of that bulk of money. What was the total dollar figure on that? Of twenty thousand is what the amendment has in it. The first reading of that is, is on the agenda for today. We estimated about 17000 We do have 2000 I believe, and uh, so it's anywhere from fifteen to 17000 Yeah, that was my understanding. I would have no problem with us moving forward as long as we have the funds. We do have, I have one other thing in, involving those, and that's WAC Pack is having a little bit of trouble uh, with uh, the uh, uh, liability insurance, getting it possibly and getting it paid for. So they may need some a little bit of help for that. If down the road, I don't think it's going to be extremely expensive. But they, think, yeah, I think when I've looked into the past, it's thousand to fifteen hundred dollars for the year. Right. Well, that, but uh, they were, of course, their budget is is very close. Yeah. Who are they, they looking do. at? Do you know? She was looking at several different ones. She did not give me a list, but uh, Bonnie Kincannon's the oh, one okay. that's doing that. Yeah, reach. you might touch base with her and see if you could help her find something that was as affordable as possible. Okay. Well, that leaves money, Bob. That'll leave twenty thousand dollars. There was a couple of thousand dollars in there, but that's this project seventeen. So that there'll leave four or five thousand right. in there to. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would move that we that we go forward. I think this will be a good exercise. I don't know that it will it will be you know it be as much benefit to some as and other you know, but I think across the board it'll be a it'll be a good exercise for them. I would move that we go ahead with that since we have the funds identified. Second. Second. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I didn't recognize Senator Carroll here earlier, so uh, I want to make sure I, I recognize. recognize <laughs> 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 I don't have my long distance glasses on, <laughs> so you have to forgive me. Uh, and then I think we were discussing uh, the Door Scarborough property. Is there any updates on that? No, I mean, there's just several years of taxes and other issues other than it's just the fence that I could but on the city. Uh, no, not that I could, no, I didn't get a response, so I just didn't know. Is this, is it, I mean, th does this tenth of an acre have any value for the county? Is there anything that we can think of that we would use this land for? I mean, I, I, I don't, I looked at it and it doesn't look like it's a very good piece of property. Not that I can tell, I mean, Looks to me like it'd be more. It'd be worth more to either mm -hmm. property owner than anybody. anybody yeah. If it's for free and they were not taking it, that, was it offered to the city? It wasn't, was it? it? Wasn't offered to the city. I'd sent a message over to. But I don't know. They may still be looking. Did Did you talk to with Rita at all, Dotson? No. An no. Email, I, I I can follow up. I mean, if you all aren't going to act anyway. It'll be up to them. Yeah. Do you think the joining property owners even know that it's available? I haven't talked to them. Okay, I, I bet uh, they've probably never have been approached. Yeah. I would think if the person was wanting to get rid of it, all those taxes do, that would be the first ones they'd talk to. But I don't think. think. Probably be more beneficial to them than us anyway, oh, being yeah. in the city limits. And I'll, I'll check with Rita. It was, um, <coughs> I believe from the county's position, we don't, I don't see any value um, so in that piece of property. Who, who's, are there expenses for auctioning it off? Yeah, I mean, who would, who would wanna, that's what I say, I mean, this. How much is against it, Jeff? Uh, well, Taxes. Back taxes. I understand that, but how <coughs> does that amount to? $1,000, $1,500, something like that. But just if the county takes it, obviously you don't have to pay any tax. Okay. What about the city? Same. No Same. taxes? Yeah, well, if any any government agency takes control of it, then there is Okay, no so there, there is no cost. It's, a, it's strictly a gift then. Mm -hmm. The only, the only outside is when the state did the buyback several okay. years ago. Right. That's been near, I guess, right at 10 years ago. Okay. okay. We'll move on with new business. Um, Ordinance 2018-10, amended building fee schedule, first reading. It's Casey. We'll wait for Casey, he's supposed to be coming down. We'll move on to ordinance 2018-11, uh, budget amendment first reading. Ordinance 2018-11, an ordinance relating to the annual budget and amendment thereof, whereas the County of Marshall has received additional funds. Now be it ordained by the Fiscal Court of Marshall County that section one, the annual budget for fiscal year 2018-2019 is amended to increase revenue accounts of the general fund insurance claims $84,020.05, general fund miscellaneous $355,068.14, general fund surplus from prior year $120,019, general fund prior year void checks $106.32, Road fund grant and road agreements, $233,000. Road fund truck license distribution fees, $19,527.03. Road fund driver's license refunds, $3,273.25. Road fund insurance claims, $7,566.62. Jail fund miscellaneous, $3,516.64. 
jail fund surplus from prior year, $46,181.35. 911 fund insurance claims, $2,906.79. 911 surplus from prior year, $60,398.71. ABC fund surplus from prior year, $93,448.69 and building inspection fund surplus from prior year, $45,888.94 for a total increased revenue of $1,074,902.72. Our increased expenditure account, Sheriff's Office auto repairs, $9,155.25. Sheriff's administrative expenses for jury meals, $55.46. Other buildings, maintenance and repairs, $2,465.97, County Judge Executive Office Travel, $166.04, Commissioner District 2 Travel Expense, $829.01, Fiscal Court Capital Projects, Multi-Service Building, $70,000, Economic Development, Industrial Development Authority Payments, $304,061. Arden Community Building Lease Agreement, $2,500, Special Service Group Grants, $20,000, Jonathan Creek Water Line Expansion, 80,000. General Fund Reserves, $69,961.97. Road Department Construction, $40,000. Salt, $13,000. Road Department Equipment, $68,000. Road Fund Reserves, $142,366.90. Jail Fund Reserves, $49,697.99. 911 salaries, 58,000. 911 fund travel and training, $5,305.50. ABC fund reserves, $93,448.69. Building inspection fund reserves, $45,888.94. Total increased expenditures of $1,074,902.72. Section two, the amount added to the revenue and expenditure count in section one are for governmental purposes. The first reading is held the 17th day of September, 2018. I see Casey's here. So uh, ordinance 2018-10 amended uh, budget fee schedule, first reading. Y'all got any questions for Casey? You got a copy of that to read? These are changes by the state. Yeah. And that's pretty much what drove this. These are, these are changes that we are making to the, ours. Um, this, it's taken from the state's fee schedule. Okay. Um, the, I think the first time we made changes was in 16, yeah. and that was implementing um, a part, part of the state's fee schedule. And I guess you could say that was on my part. I didn't know enough at the time that I took that thing over. And now this is pretty much verbatim what the state's fee schedule is because that's what it should have been to begin with. What section of this? This is really, this isn't a summary, Jeff. So what? Uh, I don't know. I've, I haven't seen this. as far as reading the first reading of it. It is in correct oh, format. Oh, probably the the those outlined portions. Yeah. Underlined. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> this will be <clears throat> amendment at the ordinance 2018-10, which amends ordinance 2014-10. Under uh, bu building plan review and inspection fees, uh, there will, uh, under table one, the uh, daycare centers have been taken out, ha high hazard taken out, and then the note under on post frame construction taken out. The add-in is storage buildings not for commercial use over 2,500 square feet shall be 15 cents per square foot for the initial 2,500 square feet and six cents per each additional square foot over 2,500. Then you move over in the second column under the, the new add-in, fast track elective for permit applicants seeking early site and foundation approval for Prior to full review of the complete set of construction documents, the fee shall be that is calculated from table one plus 50% of the full fee. The additional 50% shall not be less than $400, $400 no more than $3,000. The entire fee shall be paid at the time 
of the initial plan submission. Then down under table two, fire detection is fire detection system review fee zero to 20,000 square feet shall be $275. Over 20,000 square feet shall be $275 plus $30 for each additional 10,000 square feet in excess, in excess of 20,000 square feet. The next page, stand, uh, stand pipe plan review fee, $275. It's a combination stand pipe and riser plans shall be reviewed under the automatic sprinkler review fee schedule. Carbon dioxide suppression system review, one to 20 pounds of agent shall be $275. Over 200 pounds of agent shall be $275 plus five cents per pound in excess of 200 pounds. Clean agent suppression system review. Up to 35 pounds of agent shall be $275. Over 35 pounds shall be $275 plus 10 cents per pound in excess of 35 pounds. The fee for gaseous systems shall be 10 cents per cubic foot, not less than $275. Foam suppression system review fee. 50 cents per gallon of foam concentrate where the system is not part of an automatic sprinkler system. Foam suppression system plans that are submitted as part of the automatic sprinkler system shall be reviewed under the automatic sprinkler review fee schedule. The fee for review of plans under this section shall not be less than $275, no more than $1,500. Commercial range hood review fee, $85 per system, including range hood extinguishing system review when those plans are submitted together. Moving on down, dry chemical systems review fee, except range hoods, one to 30 pounds of agent shall be $275. Over 30 pounds of agent shall be $275 plus 25 cents per pound in excess of 30 pounds. Consumer fireworks retail fee for tents, temporary structures, or buildings used for the retail Sales of consumer fireworks, the fees shall be $125. Um, that seems to be all there. Can you go back to carbon dioxide? Sure. Suppression system? Uh -huh. One to 20 pounds? That doesn't, something's wrong there. Should be either one to 200 pounds or, or one to 20, and then it's over 20 if you look See what I mean? It looks to me as though that 20 should be 200. Yeah. Possibly, or, you know, down here, uh, dry chemical, one to 30 pounds of agent would be 275, and then over 30 pounds of agent would be 275 plus 25 cents. So it could be that the other one should be 20 pounds. I don't know which one's which, but one, I think that's a, I think there's something wrong there. Well, that can still count as your first reading. Okay. Yes. That's fine. I just wanted to make, you know, if somebody, we need to look at it. it, it, it I, don't, I think there's a gap there. You can catch problem. All right. That's the first reading. Um, resolution 2018-03 Multi-Jurisdictional Hazard Mitigation Plan. This is the Ad Regional. V. Browner uh, from the Division of Emergency Management referenced the uh, multi-jurisdictional hazard mitigation plan uh, purchase area development district regional uh, dear Browner uh, this is to confirm that we have completed a federal review of the draft purpose ad regional multi-jurisdictional hazard mitigation plan for compliance with the federal hazard mitigation planning requirements contained in 44 CFR 201 uh, Six subsection B to D, we have determined that the purchase ad regional multi-jurisdictional hazard mitigation plan is now compliant with federal requirements, subject to formal community adoption. Upon submittal of a copy of documentation of the adoption resolution to our office, we will issue formal approval of the purchase ad regional multi-jurisdictional hazard mitigation plan. Please have the Planning Committee of the Purchase Ed Regional Multi-Jurisdictional Hazard Mitigation Plan submit a final copy of their plan with draft notions and track changes. And for further information, uh, do not hesitate to contact uh, 
uh, Shanti Smith of the Hazard Mitigation Assistance Branch. Sincerely, Christine uh, Martinez. So, Jeff, do you get the resolution? Yes, I do. Can you read that? <clears throat> this will be Marshall County Resolution 2018-03, whereas the Marshall County, the <clears throat> Whereas the county of Marshall has experienced damage <clears throat> from severe thunderstorms, lightning, hail, wind, or tornadoes, and flooding on many occasions in the past century, resulting in property loss, loss of life, economic hardships, and, the, and threats to public health and safety, and the potential for similar loss from an earthquake. Whereas the Jackson Purchase Natural Hazard Mitigation Plan, called the Plan, has been updated and revised after more than one year of research work and work by the staff of the Purchase Area Development District. The members of the Jackson Purchase Region Natural Hazard Mitigation Committees and the representatives of the community. Whereas the plan recommends hazard mitigation actions that will protect people and property affected by the natural hazards that face the Purchase Area Development District. And whereas public meetings were held as required by law now, therefore, be it resolved by the, count, by the judge executive and the county commissioners of Marshall County that one, the Jackson Purchase Region Natural Medi Hazard Mitigation Plan has hereby adopted as an official plan of the Purchase Counties and the jurisdictions within Ballard, Callaway, Carlisle, Fulton, Graves, Hickman, Marshall, and McCracken. Number two, the respective Marshall County officials identified in the strategy of the plan are hereby directed to implement the recommended actions assigned to them. These officials will report yearly on their activities, accomplishments, and progress to the Jackson Purchase Region Natural Hazard Mitigation Committee. Number three, the Jackson Purchase Region Natural Hazard Mitigation Committee will provide annual progress reports on the status of implementation of the plan to the judge executive and the county commissioners of Marshall County. This report shall be submitted to the county in November of each year, passed by the fiscal court of Marshall County this blank day of blank 2018. This reference to public meetings, we didn't conduct those. You mean the Jackson Purchase Regional National Hazard Mitigation Committee? I'm okay. Right. Because we haven't. This is word for word pretty much identical to the 2016 copy we submitted and signed off on. It's where we revamped it a couple years ago. We took the big time earthquake that everybody's been waiting on for the last 80, 90 years and meeting with all the regions around here. We've had to revamp that. You know, we've moved the earthquake down and put the flash flood and stuff like that up as a top priority. So makes it easier for mitigation grants in the future. So. <coughs> been about 200 years. Me. Been waiting on it 200 years, I think. Yeah. 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 A little over. We would need a motion on this resolution. Motion to approve your signature on the resolution, Judge. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Commonwealth Kentucky Lease Renewal Agreement. This, uh, you've got this material here. This, uh, we actually have a deadline to get these in, I think, next, by next month, but this is to renew uh, our lease agreement uh, at the AOC with some of the agencies here. Uh, dear property owners, this is the Marsh County Fiscal Court. Renewal of expiring lease agreements on or before June 30th, 2019, the final extension of your lease agreement will expire, provided a satisfactory agreement can be reached. The occupying agency desires to remain at this location. The easiest way to handle this with your agreement is to renew the lease at the present terms and conditions. Renewal instructions, please see section A. If you intend to seek a rental increase, please uh, see section B. So it gives, uh, the back is the lease renewal contract instruction sheet, but it gives you the basic uh, option to renew as is or increase if we choose. So. I don't know what's anybody got a recommendation as to. We've been 
living under this same agreement all these years. Right. <coughs> the increases in cost to us that's been incurred, or but is it still where they? Uh, is this the eighty twenty that? Yeah. Where they do the repairs and that's it, all that. Yeah. Those same items. Anybody got any suggestions so if it needs to change but I don't know of anything. I don't know that the don't know know percentages anything. are based on use by the state and by the county and I don't know that those are changed so it would be a good state well this this uh, proposal gives you an option doesn't it to choose to increase your rate well no I mean to for the length of the agreement yeah we have done in the past what three years what I can't really remember I think it was five years five years and this this proposal uh, gives us an option of going to 2027 because and we're gonna be looking at this very close and over the next five years given that we got some issues mold issues that we're doing they're studying right now I would think a shorter contract would uh, at least get them back to the table with us or the opportunity to sit down and, and I, I certainly wouldn't think maybe 2027 20, with that in mind that uh, maybe that's a little too lengthy. I probably wouldn't move past the five years. I wouldn't probably do any more than five before I went back to the table. Yeah. I think that should be adequate. Which option? Uh, we select an A, B, or C. With any uh, changes? It looked to me like it would be A, because you're not asking for a rate increase. If we're not if we're not asking for a rate increase, it'd be A, and we could go to. I mean, that, that's up to everyone. To three years would be twenty-two. Five years would be twenty-four. I think. It's out on the 2019, June 30th, 2019 is the expiration date. Right. 2023. 22, put it at the next, end of the next election cycle. Not that that makes a difference with that billing. Well, it's, I think they got an example here, if you wish. Are we, are we looking to uh, continue the lease at the same terms and conditions for three years? 2022 uh, it is presently three years I mean I guess that's where I got the three years or in my mind it was three years yeah because next year be one well it goes through June of 2019 June of 19 yeah. right we just have to have our response 2020 by would be one. October <coughs> 8th. Yeah, 2020 June of I think it's probably a pretty good idea to, with what Jeff mentioned of some of the issues that we're going to have in the near future that we probably hold it to three and uh, have an opportunity to at least sit down at that point and bring them back to the table to, to do so. Three years. Motion in that we agree to the same terms uh, for a duration of three years till the 20, June 30th, 2022. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And Jason, you got a sanitation update? Yes, I'm happy to report that we uh, had a meeting two weeks ago between uh, I was there, Marty was there. 
two representatives from the school district, and we agreed in principle on a plan to get this worked out between the sanitation district and the school board. So Marty's working on getting a draft agreement prepared, and hopefully we'll have that done in the next week or so. Okay. Getting in a, a lift station. I saw it going in the other day, a big one. Very good. The um, next item on the new business library board appointment. Um, my appointments, Lisa Carter. Move to accept your appointment, Judge Lisa Carter. Second that. All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? I know she can read. Uh, nuisance board appointment, uh, Coy McCurry, uh, Rhea, he's up for reappointment. I'd like to appoint him back on the uh, nuisance board appointment. So moved, Judge. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, We've got the tax rate order for you. Um, we can't, I know you had in mind to um, ask for a special call meeting. If presenting that um, at one time would be probably easier than presenting it and then amending it the next court meeting. So assuming that we can get that special call meeting scheduled and get that on the agenda for that, then it would be better to postpone it until then. However, I think you all have a copy of it. That is for your review until that time. Um, Fair Deal and Olive Fire Department is the one that I do not have. Mm. Which one? Fair Deal and Olive Fire Department. They're the one that I okay. don't have confirmation on their rate. I feel like it'll stay the same. They're at the cap, so it really can't change. But until I have some type of documentation for them, I don't want you all to move on it. Um, so hopefully they they thought that they would have a quorum Wednesday. They tried to meet prior to and they didn't have a quorum. So they do know that we're gonna send out tax bills October 1 and if we can't get them on our sheet to be approved, they'll have to bill and collect their entire tax roll. So that will be a great hardship on them if, if, if they don't get us their information in time. Okay. So we can go ahead and discuss that now if we want, setting a special call meeting uh, for September 25th at 1 p.m. Um, there'll be two items discussed. Um, this will be one of them. Um, there'll be a presentation from uh, Dennis Smith on the uh, Marsh County Industrial Development Authority. Uh, and that's the Involving the present financial um, RFPs and landowner. Did you say that Dennis and the board will be here that same day? It's Dennis, not the board. Okay. Uh, At what time? 1 p.m. September. I won't, I won't be available, but that's okay. Will you be available in the morning? I won't be available at all. Okay. I could, uh, I could uh, FaceTime mm -hmm. in. I could call in or FaceTime in. I'll be in mm -hmm. Utah. Soon. <laughs> oh, I'll, I might do I'd like to hear. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, that's you can right. get with Dennis. I'm sure. I would Pretty like to hear the horse. September. <laughs> What's the end? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, um, okay, so we'll set that. And uh, I know they were communicated with Fairdale and Olive. I, if I'm where I go, you know, give me a time, and if I'm where I can, I'm, I just call Brad and okay. get it set up. Perfect. All right, so we'll table that until uh, the 25th. Get the time zone change. I understand. I'm going to be in mountain time. <clears throat> Treasurer's report.
As of August 31st, 2018, General Fund had a book balance of $600,814.65, Rogue Fund $1,948,008.24, Jail Fund $253,798.41, Grant Fund, zero. 911 Fund, $108,889.96. Occupational Tax Administrator, $4,472,647.71. ABC, $200,316.36. Building Inspection, $45,953.46 for total reporting funds of $7,630,428.79. Approve the treasurer's report subject to audit. Second. All those in favor say aye. Uh, Any opposed? Motion carries. Appropriations transfer. Um, I have several appropriation transfers um, to get all line items in the black. Um, there are a few that I want to point out just so um, we're clear about the path that this, this is going to take in our books. Um, because we have we receded the money um, from PACRO and was it the PAD office? Um, it was the three hundred and four thousand dollars that we we got in, and then we handed it over to the Industrial Development Authority. Um, that money has to be amended in before it can cross out that expenditure. So, to cover that expenditure for the time being, I am moving the appropriations from. The 190,000 from the KI debt debt service expansion, and um, the 100,000 dollars from contingency reserves, and then another 14,000 out of general fund reserves. Those amounts are going to go towards offsetting that IDC payment. Then, when this budget amendment is approved, hopefully the next court meeting, first one in October, then those funds would be restored back to those line items. It's only a temporary wash, and they would be restored. Um, there are a couple others. Uh, the engineering expense, general fund reserves covering those temporarily. I believe those are ones that we're going to request back from the from the loan. Yes. Um, so you'll be seeing in multiple budget amendments throughout as we get those funds back in um, that those will, will return. But temporarily, we are offsetting expenses with them out of the general fund reserve and other line items. To accept appropriation transfers. Second. All those in favor say aye. Uh, Any opposed? Motion carries. Intra fund transfer. I'm asking your um, authorization to move $500,000 from the occupational tax fund to the general fund. Motion to approve the transfer. Second that. All those in favor say aye. Uh, uh, Any opposed? Motion carries. Payment of the bills. Motion to pay the bills, Judge. Second that. All those in favor say aye. Okay. aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Uh, we can go into executive session with the land acquisition, or we can put it on the 25th. It don't matter to me. We're all here. I know Bob, you're going to be out, so we can we can go in executive session since you're going to be gone. Wait, but I mean, I may call in. It shouldn't last out. We want to go into it now. I'm not going Motion. to be here for the uh, October 2nd fiscal court meeting. I'd love to get that changed if possible. I won't be back until the 6th of October. Let that me. Be gone. I mean, Johnny said you'd talk until the first, just October. Oh, okay. Johnny said he wasn't going to be here for the second. Yeah, fall, fall breaks the, the week after. The next week? Yeah. We've got. I know we've got a presentation on the second.
Johnny said he's not going to be here. Okay. Fall break the following week. I think it is. Yeah, we're, it. we may have. Um, we may have some. You're talking today's the seventeenth. We'll have a special club meeting the following Tuesday. Uh, two weeks out, we may have some decisions that may have to be made by then. Uh, why don't we? Put on the special call meeting on the 25th that we discuss it then we might have some clarifying information hopefully by then but there's uh, there's gonna be a lot of decisions moving fairly quickly um, if we push it back if you can, uh, <clears throat> the 25th if you anything you want to do then I will make a I mean I'll try to my, yeah, it should be no problem for me to actually call call sure. in if, if I'm needed. I didn't know if it would be anything that big a deal, but if we're going to talk about the you know, Southwest one, some of that, I'd, I'd like to listen in anyway. We might be able to get you Skyped in or yeah. Facebook yeah, that, in. I can, I can do that, and, and uh, then you can do whatever you want to on the 25th. I'm we're going to leave it at 1 o'clock now that we've added more to it added, on added. the 25th. Yeah. Could we just move the second October second meeting to the twenty fifth? Well, we've got uh, we've had uh, um, the uh, first reading. We're potentially going to be doing a first reading from our meeting the other day on the oh, on the I second. He's going to be out there. May not be. Oh, he's going to be out there. Yeah. I would think we would leave the second for right now. Uh, I don't. We've got a lot of things that are moving, and uh, I think by the 25th we may have some better information as far as changing the second. Um, especially if fall breaks that following week, we'd be looking at going into the week of the 15th, and that's five weeks potentially. Uh, when you're going to be gone, fall break. So <coughs> we'll just go ahead and hold up on that right now and just leave the second in place until we get some more information. So we would need a let's get a motion to go in executive session for land. The twenty fifth we're talking about one but 1 we're talking about at one PM. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. it'll change on here. <laughs> it knows. <laughs> Is there a motion? Motion to go, to go in executive session, Judge. Second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, we got everybody. We can go ahead and call the county fiscal court back to order. Um, we don't have any further information to discuss, so we. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried.